Um, before we started the show today, they did release the first trailer for Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, that was going to be one of our main topics today. At first, it was just going to be talking about the change of the release date. But right before the show started, they dropped the trailer. I thought they were going to wait for one of the football games today to drop the trailer during halftime or whatever. But I guess they wanted to drop it early. So, let's start. That's going to be our first topic today. Yep. Uh, the Godzilla vs. Kong release date change and the trailer. Well, so, 20, 2020 is still impacting 2021. Yes, sir. And also, uh, we all, I also want to bring up, you can go on our page, Attack the Mat, on Facebook, and we have a link to the trailer. So if you want to watch the trailer first, and then tune into our podcast, you're more than welcome to do that, or listen to our thoughts, and then go watch the trailer. Either mm-hmm. way, the trailer is on our link on Facebook, so be sure to check that out. Yep. So, Zach. Yeah. What, first of all, what are your thoughts about the other Godzilla Kong movies? I mean, they were movies, but they were, they're were good popcorn movies. They're kind of, these are not the movies that you go in and go, like, I'm looking for a technical masterpiece, because half of it's CGI, the other half is people going like, oh, wow, oh my gosh, explosion, running away from the falling towers or whatever. So it's very kind of like summer action movie type stuff. They've been good. You don't watch them for substance. You watch them for style. So great they're, explosion movies. They're kind of like the Transformers movies. Right. You you're watch not, them. You turn your brain off. You you're know? not going to watch a Transformer movie for Academy Award winning acting mm-hmm. or... Great directing. You're going for popcorn, turn your brain off, watch robots find each other, and watch hot girls run around. Yeah, and now hours. you're watching, you know, uh, Godzilla and Kong do it. Yeah. I. The first Godzilla movie. Or the is this first, the third time they've done this? This is the. Second? Fourth in their monster universe. Okay. Um, we had. And I was going to go right into that. We had Godzilla in 2014 that had Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian Cranston, and Elizabeth Olsen in that one. I didn't mind that one. My problem with that one was you're not showing enough of the monster. And when you do, you're cutting away to the human characters. And we're here to keep seeing Godzilla. And then they had Kong, Skull Island. Mm-hmm. In 2017, and that was set like during the Vietnam War, and that Samuel Jackson, Marie Larson, um, Alexander Skarsgård. I didn't mind that one. Well, that one at least had more of Kong in it than Godzilla had of Godzilla in the Godzilla movie. And then the recent one, Godzilla versus uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. It was alright. That was another one that was spending too much time on the humans mm-hmm. and not enough on the monsters. But at least this time they learned we need to show more of the monsters fighting instead of cutting away to the humans. Yeah. But overall, I still haven't been that impressed with their monster universe. Yes, the special effects mm-hmm. look great. Whereas once again, we live in a world now where Almost any movie that has a sizable budget is going to have great effects. I need a story that and characters that actually motivate me to want to keep watching or keep returning. So, those are my thoughts. you have anything to add on the other films? Yeah, I think the biggest thing about this... Let's get into the breaking down the trailer just a little bit. Because... I think the one good thing about the trailer is that it true it ge- it shows that human part like it's giving you the human story. Yeah. When you watch the trailer, oh Kong, it has this connection to and this little, little girl. girl and everything else. So they're giving you that human angle, and I think and what I hope that they're doing for this is that they're just using that part as the impetus for everything else. 
Mm-hmm. I I really don't want them to be focusing on that. It's like I want them to say, oh, Godzilla, for some reason, attacked this little girl who was on a military boat. And then Kong said, oh, no, you didn't. Mm. And then Kong and Godzilla fight and we kind of forget about the humans. That's just it's the spark that starts the fight. But it's not I don't want it to continue to be the entire thing in the fights. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing for me. And how I'm kind of thinking about it. I just don't want... I don't want that storyline to basically be like, oh, Godzilla takes a blast at the kid in the city and Kong has to, like, jump in the way of the like the laser beam blast. It's like, I don't care to see that. I don't want to see that. I don't... Well, I think... We're in monster fight territory. Let's stay on monster fight. I agree. I agree your point there. And I don't know if they're trying to make up... Like, in all the Kong movies, from the original to the... Peter Jackson remake that I actually think is very underrated, where you always had Kong protect some female character in some way. I hope they're not using that trope of, okay, we got Kong, so we're just going to stick a female character in there for him to protect. Because we've seen that in all the other Kong movies. So, also I've noticed in the trailer... I would think there are a divide. You got the people that are on Godzilla's side from the Godzilla movie. And now we got these new characters from the Kong movie. Or on the Kong side. But here's my thing about King Kong, though. The King Kong movie took place, like, in the 70s. So between the 70s to present day, where has Kong been? And wh- where, how are all these people... Well, according to the trailer, he was on a boat, and he was not moving fast. For 40 years? Yeah. <laughs> For almost 40, 50 years? Well, that's... been a slow that's, boat. <laughs> that's what the trailer says, he was on a boat. <laughs> um, and then who are these new, Who are these people that are on Kong's side? Because I think only one of them, Alexander Skarsgård, was in the Kong movie... But he looks exactly the same in the present day as he did in the 70s. So does he not age at all? <laughs> um, that's a little confusing. Um, because Millie Bobby Brown is once again, she was in the last Godzilla movie. Even she looks older in this one. So I'm like, okay, Alexander Skarsgård hasn't aged in a day. <laughs> Typical Skarsgård family gene, obviously. But knowing Mommy Brown, I've aged a couple of years already, and she looks like she has. So... Well, know. we're going into the uh, suspend your disbelief mode into this. And you have to understand really it's a monster movie with a giant gorilla and a giant lizard. But also, at the end of the day, like, explain that one. Explain the, char- the human character not aging. At all. Uh, there is no explanation for and that. And where's Samuel Jackson when you need him? <laughs> I'm waiting for the line. We got we got M and F <laughs> fighting in city. We got giant mother, mo- giant <laughs> lizard, and giant gorilla fighting. See, at that point in time, they just need to make, like, an Avengers joke and just have, like, that. And <laughs> just go, like, I guess it's just, like, too bad there's not, like, some group that can come and save our... That would, actually, that would actually be funny if that actually shows up in the movie. Where does that team up? Different studio. <laughs> See, what I think they should do, here's what I hear if we're going, because there is a Marvel reference in the trailer. Because there's a point at the, near the end of the trailer where Godzilla shoots off his beam and Kong comes in wielding the hammer of Mjolnir that legitimately is absorbing Godzilla's laser blast, absorbs it, and then just whacks him with it. And it's like, oh, that's legit a Marvel thing. Well, that's, that's, exactly, well, that's exactly what Thor was doing going out after Thanos. Right. In Infinity War, coming down with the hammer. Right. I'm just waiting for Khan to go, you should have gone for the head. <laughs> <laughs> No, what I think would be really cool if they, if they bring in, like, this is an elite tactical team of 
the best and top warriors of everything and they like you show them like walking down a plane ramp or whatever and then you just have like Godzilla or Kong step on them and just kill them <laughs> there's your Avengers there's your Avengers reference or a Justice League reference however whichever one you dislike it can be there for you and you just like wipe them out and just like oh, well Earth Mightiest Heroes gone in a flash so let me ask a question they didn't really show it in the trailer but do you think there's going to be another monster showing up? Well, it showed those winged creatures. But I don't know if those were flashbacks of Kong on his own island. And that's when he first had beef with Godzilla mm-hmm. at that time. Or do you think there's going to be another Mothra or another Ghidorah giant showing up? I mean, they did hint that at the end of Godzilla King of the Monsters in the post credit scene that there was another monster coming. I can see this movie taking one of two turns. Mm-hmm. And that is, the turn is, because in the trailer, you'll see it's like, only one will survive. And you go like, well, that's the red herring. That could be the red herring, because that's what it looks like. And they uh, the double red herring is that audio in the trailer at one point they say is she going like why is godzilla attacking like they're so bewildered that godzilla is attacking yeah why is godzilla attacking humans right it's like why why is he doing it so you could say that whatever they could have the thing where it's like the other monsters are causing godzilla to attack or whatnot godzilla got covid yeah godzilla got COVID. COVID. he got covid he's on a rampage that's what's going on. He's going like, I'm sick of your crud. He needed more toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> He's going like, where is it? But I think what's going to end up being, my, spo- my spoiler prediction for the movie is that Godzilla is lashing out or somehow being controlled by the other monsters. And sooner or later, Godzilla and Kong stop fighting because other monster shows up. And then both of them go and fight the other monster destroy the other monster and then they move on with their lives I, that would be my assumption for what happens you, you have an idea i don't know much about the whole monster lore Godzilla lore Kong. i think there's yeah. another one there's gamera which is the turtle or whatever all i remember is just i, don't remember, I remember watching a movie as a child that was like just on tv one time and it was just a turtle flying around and shooting jets from its thing. But I'm pretty sure that's Gamera. I don't remember. Like, Gamera! I don't remember. I hope there's no turtle. I think I might walk out of the theater if I think a Well, at that turtle. point in time, we're going like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and like <laughs> the other stuff where they take the... What's it? Oh, shoot. I'm losing all credibility now because I can't remember the... Mm. Bebop and Rocksteady, I yeah. think? Yep. Yeah. There we go. There, yeah. I'm not. I'm not a completely total waste of a '90s kid. All right, so I think that's our thoughts on the trailer. Uh, also, they this movie was originally supposed to come out in May, but because of HBO and Warner Brothers, the HBO Max fiasco that happened, uh, we recently found out that they moved the release date up to March, the end of March of this year. So instead of coming out in May, it will be out in March. And this movie will be on HBO Max and in theaters. And this is one of those movies I will be seeing in theaters, not on my home TV. Because this is a movie I will pay to see in theaters. Giant IMAX, surround sound, Kong, Godzilla going at it. I'll pay. Yeah, this is kind of the big... This is the one... This is the type of movie in which you have the debate of movie theaters versus streaming. Mm -hmm. And you can have that. And that's why, personally, I think doing it the way that they are is doing it the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. You release it in the theaters because that's going to be the highest end. Unless you have built your own movie theater with rumble chairs and all that stuff and a giant screen. It's like you're not going to get a bigger screen than a movie theater. And You're just not going to have it. But IMAX. I mean, IMAX. I'm, I'm not even going to see this in a regular theater. I'm going to go to either the Nomi Prime at AMC or their IMAX screen mm-hmm. and see this movie. 
Right. I'm not even going. I'm not even going to mess with a regular project, projection theater. I'm at or the prime. That's it. Right. And then mm. you can have that for the for the people who want that experience. That's what the movie theater is there for. But then you can have someone else, like my mom and dad, who might just go like, oh, we don't care to see it in there, but they have HBO Max, and they might just go like, oh, we want to, it's a Friday night, and we want to watch something, throw it on. We want to watch something fun and dumb. Right. <laughs> so there's that. There, you, so you have the people who want the, it's like they want the full experience, which would be mm-hmm. the movie theater experience, but then you're also getting it for the people who are not, they don't care. Because yeah. there's, there's a lot of people who are just like, I don't care how I consume it, I just want to consume it. Oh, there, yeah. There's someone out there who's going to watch it on their iPhone with their i their i their their AirPods or whatever in their ears, and that's how they're going to watch it for the first time, and they'll go like, oh, cool, and they'll move on with life. And, yes, and, I, and I, like I said, I haven't been a fan of this monster universe so far, and none of the movies have been like, yeah, that was great. So I can see someone... A regular person, a regular Joe, meaning like, I didn't like the other movies when I saw them in theaters. This one I had the option to stay at home and watch it on HBO Max. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that instead. I'm not going to go put money down in the theater when I didn't like the three previous movies. Mm Mm-hmm. And you'll have those people. Mm Mm-hmm. Or let's just take a, let's take it out in the fact, like, let's just pick another movie. Let's say this was... Whatever, a generic sequel to a first movie that you didn't like, but you're bored. Oh, I guess I'll turn on HBO Max and look under the new thing Mm -hmm. and say, oh, that just came out. I remember seeing the first, the original movie, uh, however long ago. Eh, This is a sequel. Eh, I'm bored. Let's watch it. Uh, Okay, I just thought of this. I know we're about to wrap up on this segment, I, for some reason, I just thought of this when what, thinking about the trailer. The little girl in the trailer. Uh-huh. Now, I don't know what time period that that scene takes place in, but I know the actress Jessica Henwick, she was in Iron Fist. She was an Asian. Yes. She's in this movie. They never showed her in the trailer. So, I, I'm, have a, I have a theory that the little girl ends up being this actress grown up in present day. Could be. Because they did either Jessica Henwick, she was in Iron Fist, she was just in the movie Love and Monsters. Go look her up on IMDb. And like I said, they didn't show her in the trailer. But when I just rem- was reminded of the little girl, I'm like, I have a feeling that little girl grows up. And it's Jessica Henwood's character. So, that's just a theory I have. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. Well, talking about casting choices. Yeah, they have a dominant cast here. You got casting from, I think you got Godzilla cast from, like, Millie Mommy Brown from Stranger Things. Kyle Chandler's returns as her father from, like, Friday Night Lights, Wolf of Wall Street. Um... You got Alexander Skarsgård. Uh, you got Isa Gonzalez. She was in Hobbs and Shaw. Uh, I think you got Rebecca Hall is in this movie. She's from The Town, The Prestige. Um, I don't know if Vera Farmiga is going to be Matt. She played the mother of Millie Mommy Brown in the movie. She's probably going to be... I don't know if Ken Wanamie is going to return from the first Godzilla movie. Uh, I, yeah, I would love to see Aaron Taylor Johnson or Elizabeth Olsen return also from that first Godzilla film. But we'll see. But it already has a, a stat cast already. Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering how... And that's the one worry I already have with the movie. Just like the previous movies. Too many human characters. I don't want the focus to be on the humans. I'm coming to see Godzilla Kong. Mm-hmm. Give me a little human story to get the ball rolling. But then I just want the two monsters fighting. So, once again, this movie comes out in the end of March. About two months from today. 
And always remember to like, comment, subscribe wherever you are. The podcast is available wherever you want to get your podcast. If we are not there, let us know and we will get there. Remember to like our Facebook page, Attack Bat Productions. Thanks for listening, everyone.